Hello my dear students. I'm Dr. Vaishali Bharambe. I've been teaching anatomy for the last 25 years and I love it. Today I'm going to talk about non disjunction. Every animal, mammal, has their own set of chromosomes. For example, horses have 64, chimpanzees have 48, dogs have 78 chromosomes. Okay? Similarly, man has 46 chromosomes. The diploid number in man is 46. The haploid number that is carried by a gamete, okay, one from the father, one from the mother, is 23. Any difference in these basic numbers can occur because of something called as the non-disjunction. Can you say it once? Non-disjunction, right? So this number that you are seeing as a constant, 46, is altered. if there is something called non disjunction happening in the parent okay so let's see what is non disjunction non disjunction is a genetic event in which homologous chromosomes that means chromosome pair of 1 pair of 2 or xy also are homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids refuse to segregate into two daughter cells at the time of meiosis okay or even mitosis but meiosis is what we are talking about today so if you have two chromosomes that don't segregate in meiosis or two chromatids that don't segregate in meiosis then the condition is called non disjunction you must be thinking ma'am ye kuch jama nahi didn't understand let's use images to understand i always tell you images speak way more than words come on So here, what you're seeing on the screen is the normal meiosis one and two. Okay, so this cell that you're seeing is the normal cell that is going into gametogenesis. In meiosis one, what should you want? You want the two chromosomes to go to each daughter cell. So yes, it happens. In meiosis one, one of a pair goes to each of the daughter cells. Normal. Now the cell goes into meiosis two. this time you if you recall the chromosomes split in the center one chromatid from each goes to the daughter cell accordingly you can see one chromatid each has segregated into daughter cell so as you can see four normal haploid gametes are produced take a good look at this image because this is where the abnormalities are going to happen in the next slide okay so parent cell meiosis 1 meiosis 2 formation of normal haploid gametes okay now let's see where the problem lies in numerical chromosomal abnormalities right so now here you are seeing the same parent cell okay in meiosis 1 what the two chromosomes do hum saath saath hai we will not leave each other we are damn good friends okay so what happens the two chromosomes of a pair go to the daughter cell together they don't segregate at all so one daughter cell has both the pairs and other daughter cell has none of the chromosomes at all right now when this cell this abnormal cell goes into gametogenesis what happens the chromatid separate to give rise to daughter cells or gametes which contain both the chromatids of a pair such a gamete is called as a diazomic gamete So now you have a chromosome which instead of having twin you have a gamete which instead of having 23 chromosomes has got 24 chromosomes okay now let's see what happens a normal gamete comes from the parent may it be father or may it be mother and what happens you have a progeny which is having two chromosomes of a pair from one parent and one chromosome of a pair from the other parent what has happened this is how trisomy is produced have you understood this so the gamete must have only one chromosome of a pair when it has two it results in trisomy meanwhile this other empty cell which has in got chrom one and even one of the chromosomes of that pair divides giving rise to a pair of gametes which is nullisomic just take an example supposing both the excess have gone to the other side and this one has got no x chromosome okay so now it gives rise to two gametes which have no x chromosome at all okay now they fuse with a normal gamete 
So that normal gamete was carrying X. This one has no X. The progeny has how many X? Progeny has only one X now. This is how monosomy is produced. Okay, this is extremely interesting and it's somewhat mathematical. So if any of you out there enjoy mathematics, then I think you will enjoy this. I love it. I hope you do too. So this is how trisomies and monosomies are produced. This time we saw non-disjunction in meiosis 1. Let's see if non-disjunction in meiosis 2 produces trisomy again. Come on, let's take a look. Normal parent cell, meiosis 1 normal. Chromosomes decide to segregate into daughter cells. All is fine with the world. This time, however, when meiosis 2 occurs, there is no segregation of chromatids. Both chromatids go to the same daughter cell. Formation of a disomic gamete. Again, the leftover cell is monosomic. It's sorry, the leftover cell is nullisomic. Okay, so one cell has got no chromosome of that pair. Other cell has both the chromosomes of that pair. Now, when there is fusion with a normal gamete, there is production of what? Trisome. This is how non-disjunction in meiosis 1 or non-disjunction in meiosis 2 produces trisomy slash monosomy. Please practice this on paper. This is me telling you it may look very simple now. But when you try to do this yourself, initially you will face some challenges and later on you will have what is called as a eureka moment. When it just clicks in your brain and you find you feel, oh, this was so easy. I hope you find that moment. When I did this once and I drew it and actually I animated it, I found myself thinking, this is so beautiful. And that's why it is here in front of you. I'm sharing it with you. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Of course, the end product of these abnormal divisions results in numerical chromosomal abnormalities, which is what is the topic for today. Right, so what causes disjunction? Why do non-disjunctions really occur? Non-disjunctions occur because if you are exposed to ionizing radiations, which is what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, or maybe you have some viruses, you have some, you are exposed to chemical carcinogens. Now this is where we make our point. When a lot of factories release a lot of chemical into the environment, let it be in water, let it be in the air, we are breathing it in. Why are we pro protesting against it? Because we are saying that these are carcinogens. These can trigger of non-disjunctions in our body resulting in these abnormalities. So this is these chemical carcinogens can trigger non-disjunction. Also late paternal and maternal age. Why do we say have your children early? Not because we want to see grandchildren. No. We want you to have your children early because human body was made such that uh, as you age, there is more and more chance of abnormalities occurring, such as non-disjunction related abnormalities. Some specific genes themselves promote non-disjunction. So this is the uh, basic that you find in many of my lectures. Use this in every lecture which is related to any chromosomal abnormality. Right. Students, if you are enjoying this, please like and subscribe to my channel. Okay. Thank you. I'll see you across the screen in some other video.